Hey, what's up data geeks? Thanks for checking out this tutorial. Today, I wanna to show you how you can use uh, just a little bit of JavaScript to make a small multiples chart for every state in the United States. Now you could use this technique in any other part of the world or really any other type of data as well. But it's kind of a, just a fun little way that if you just have a little bit, uh, dip your toe in the water with some JavaScript, you'll be able to do something that's pretty cool and uh, saves you a lot of time, frankly. So what I have here on my screen is the regional workbook from Tableau. This comes shipped with Tableau. So if I were on the homepage here in Tableau desktop, I can click on regional down below and that's what we're looking at here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna generate a state map for every state in the United States, but I want it to be individual. So I wanna have this small multiples effect, like a matrix of charts, a matrix where it has each state kind of in a little grid. Now I could do that in Tableau and there's other tutorials online on how to do that. And you know, if you're just really hardcore and don't wanna leave Tableau, then you can do that. But I believe that by watching this, you're probably someone that wants to venture outside of Tableau a little bit and see what you can do with the power of the web combined with Tableau. So what I'm gonna do is I take this viz here, just the map, and I basically remove everything else. So what I end up is with this here. So this is my map, which is basically that same workbook. I did a little technique that I have another blog post about where I have uh, removed the, all the layers of the map. So I just see essentially the bits that I want, which are the states and then the counties here. Again, this could go for any other kind of map or you know other part of the world or really any other type of data set. Once I have this, this is what I'm gonna use and I'm gonna publish this to Tableau Public. Now, if you have Tableau Server, you can use that as well. I don't, but you, they'll work just the same. So once you publish that up, what we then wanna do is jump over and use some JavaScript to basically call Tableau and pass in the state that we're interested in. And we're just gonna do that for every state in our data set. So let me switch over now to CodePen, which is a website where you can type up front-end web stuff like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and have it run right in your browser. So you don't need to have a website that's hosted somewhere else or any of that. You can just type in your browser and even follow along right here. So in CodePen, I have essentially the final result. This is one of those emerald moments where it's, hey, here's how you make the cake and bam, here's the cake. Well, here's what the cake looks like. And what I have on the left, I'm gonna walk you through this, and in the blog post, I'll have details about the code and how each piece works, but I'll just explain it here so you can follow along. So first, I have just in my HTML. HTML is like the structure, if you're unfamiliar. It's kind of like if you're building a home, this is the framing of that home. These are the, the bones, if you will, the structure that everything else attaches to and sits on and so forth. So we just have something here, a little div, and a div is a container. So every time you see div, just think, okay, that's like a container, that's like a room in my house. And we have a class, and a class is just specifying how that room should look, or what it should be styled like, or how big it should be, or what the font should be, or whatever the color should be. So anytime you see div, think room in the house, Every time you see class, think the design of the room. And so here we just have our title, state level obesity rates, which you can see over here. Pretty straightforward, right? Then I have another kind of blank div down here for tiles. Now there's nothing in there, and this one has an ID instead of a class. So an ID is like an address. So it's a name that I can then reference in JavaScript. So that's all I have for HTML. I just have those basic two things. Now CSS is the styling, and there actually was a lot of styling that goes into this to make things responsive. What I mean by responsive is something where if your screen is really small or if your screen is really big, the images and the text and everything are going to adjust accordingly. So here, if I were to just drag this over to the right, notice how the maps and the text and everything else, even as I drag it further and further, things just start to fall down and realign and get smaller and bigger as I go. 
That's called responsive websites or responsive design. Tableau doesn't really do that out of the box very well. Uh, now in Tableau 10, there is the uh, mobile version where you can actually have mobile layouts, which is kind of getting towards that. In fact, it's, it's probably good enough. But a true responsive design is exactly what you're seeing here, where as the screen image changes, it automatically adjusts based on the rules that I've set up. And you do that using CSS, typically. You can also do it with JavaScript, but CSS is kind of the, the common place that you see most people do it. So I'm not gonna go into the CSS exactly. I think that would be a whole other hour. Um, I'm just gonna skip that and say, use this and it's good. Uh, if you don't believe me or if you wanna dig in further, feel feel free, there's lots of, to learn there. Um, you know, how things are referenced, how things are styled. But what I really wanna do is move on to the JavaScript side because this is where the true magic happens. And in JavaScript is where we actually write the code to generate and kind of execute this command to generate these maps. So we start out by creating a variable for our list of states. And a variable is just a term we use in JavaScript. This also could be called an array. Uh, other times you'll hear it called an object. It's kind of a loose term. JavaScript is kind of a, a wonky language like that. It's not, not extremely rigid, it's not like Java or C Sharp, um, and it's not completely loose like Python or something like that. But basically, long story short, we created I created a list here of all the states that I'm interested in. And I actually pulled that from Tableau, copied it to Excel, created a little formula to add the quotes and then the comma, and then just pasted that here. So all this is is just that list. And then you end it with a square bracket and a little semicolon. I can hide this guy so you can see. So I just hid that, still there, still the same thing, just saves me the time of having to scroll up and down. When you create an array like this, you can do some cool stuff, like you can sort. So I'm creating a new variable here, and I'm actually going to assign it the states in a sorted manner. So I'm just creating another array out of this array, but the results are gonna be sorted. Then I get into my actual code, and the, I commented things here so you can kind of look back and reference this later. Um, the first thing I'll just say, ignore the fact that this is in a function, don't worry about that right now. And the key thing is that we loop through our sorted states. So this is the syntax, this is kind of really old school, every programming language has this ability. And what we're doing is essentially using i, which is just a variable, assigning it to zero. So we're saying i is gonna start out as zero, and as long as i is less than the length of our sorted states array, go ahead and take i and do plus plus, which means add one to it. So the first time this runs, i would be zero, then the second time the run, it would be one, and then two, and then three, and then four, all the way until this condition was no longer true, and until the value of i was greater than or equal to the length of the actual array. So essentially, loop through the whole array. Now, long explanation, so, what we do then is parse out the state we're looking at. So you reference things in arrays inside of these brackets with the number of the actual element in the array. So if this were like 25, that would be the 25th element. Well, I want it to be dynamic, right? So I'm using i, which is kind of my iterator. And as I go through, I'm just going to pass that into this sorted states and then get the i elements. So it's the zero element, the one element, the two element, the three element, et cetera. And that's how you actually pull things out of an array. Then I assign that to state. So now I don't have to worry about calling sorted states throughout the rest of my code. I just call state and it represents that same thing. Cool, so next we create the URL. And the URL is how we actually create the individual map. Remember, our Tableau of Is was the full United States. But if I pass in the parameter here of ampersand state, that's a field in my data set, and I say equals that state value I just pulled out of the array, it's going to return just that state. It's as if we had a quick filter on our viz and we filter to just that state. Now that's key and I use this in many, many scenarios and it works again on Tableau Public and Tableau Server. So once we have our URL constructed, it's time to actually get some images. So we select our tiles div. Remember our container with the ID of tiles? This is how you reference that with the pound and then the ID of that element. So we're selecting that div and we're saying append, so add something. 
And here we just have some HTML that basically generates that image. Specifically, the piece that we're interested in is right here where it says image source equals that URL that we have. And just prior to that, I actually have another element, which is the title. I like to do this instead of having the title in my viz because this way I can actually select that text. You see that? Typically the way Tableau generates things is their images. So you can't actually select the, the text on your page, which for me, I don't know why it just bugs me. So I like to add it myself. And I also can style it and control it, make it responsive, all those kind of things uh, on my own. So that's what this little piece of code does here. Basically goes, gets the image from Tableau server and then adds it to my list of tiles. Now one key piece is that this style is the opacity of zero, which means I'm going to add these with, without them being visible. They're going to be invisible to start. And I do that because otherwise it would load kind of very sporadically and it would look crazy. Just these things popping up and jump jumbling around. It's just really not a great user experience. So what I do is I say, look, go get the image, load it, append this, but make it invisible for now. I don't want to see it. Then I go down and I use another function here. And this one is from a different JavaScript library called images loaded. And I select again, my tiles container, my tiles div. I say, okay, images loaded. And then that just tests whether or not all of the images inside of that container have been loaded. And when that's done, then go do something. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go through and I'm going to fade those images in. So this is another, uh, another function that's built into jQuery, which is another JavaScript library we're using here. So we're gonna select anything with the class of tile, which is what we're specifying up above. And then we're going to fade it to this one, which means the, the way this function works is you pass in the opacity that you wanna fade to. There's also fade in, fade out, and other ways to do that. But I'm gonna do it slowly, and I'm gonna fade into one, which is 100% opacity. So that means that we can now see our images. Lastly, because this is wrapped in a function, I do this because it's kind of how JavaScript works. You can uh, just work with things a bit more dynamically uh, and control the flow of operations by putting things in functions, adding callbacks, all this other stuff. Because that's in a function, I'm just gonna hide it, and then we actually, execute our code. So we just call our function and we pass in the array, which then gets used inside of the actual function. So let me just expand that out so you can see it again. We'll go ahead and run this. And the first thing that's gonna happen is gonna go get all those images. So it's just waiting. We could put a little spinner or an image or something like that. But once it's done, you can see that they all faded in very nicely. And that is how you can essentially take your one Tableau map and then generate n number of other maps that are filtered to just the things that you're looking for. You could use this for countries in the world, for provinces in other parts of the world. You could also use it for any other thing. Imagine if you had basically a small multiples of different products or things like that. You can use this technique in many different ways. And once you get a handle on the JavaScript, really all you have to do is change the URL and change the list of things you're passing in and it's fairly straightforward. Hey, thanks for checking out my video. I really, really appreciate it. Now, I also have a blog, bensullins.com, in case you haven't visited that. On there, I have videos like this, I have code samples, I have full articles describing all the tips and tricks and everything that I wanna share with you to help you in your career, as well as you can sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is basically a digest of all that, plus more stuff I found on the web that I found interesting that might be pertinent to you. So you can click this link here and go check that out. And again, I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you back here soon.